What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for stopping in. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button or right not really, really busy Saturday already. Um, I got the racing seat installed. I think, honestly, I have the only Q50 with a racing seat, at least one racing seat as far as I know. I've heard of someone having uh, racing seats installed just for SEMA for display purposes, uh, but I don't know. It's cool. It's the only installation video I know. If you saw my last video installing the seat, today I want to do a little bit of driving around and testing the seat out to see how it actually feels on the road in real life driving conditions. But first, we got to get some new tires, or we already had some new tires put on my wife's Jeep. And if you're interested in these tires, they ride super smooth. Uh, they're pretty soft, so you get some decent grip with them. But what I love about them is that they're super quiet on the road. And like I said, they ride really smooth. Of course, my wife's Jeep has 18s and a 255, sorry, they're 225, 55. So there's a lot of sidewall, a lot of cushion, uh, but man, they float good. And of course, thank you to my buddy at Amazing Grace Tire here in Greenville for getting these things mounted and balanced real quick early this Saturday morning. Appreciate it very much. What's your first impression? Um, it looks cool. Okay, try it out. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little too far. Oh, it's comfy. Comfortable? Yes. Can you reach the pedals? Um, not really? Not really. Good. No. <laughs> How about that steering wheel? It's very glossy. Rub your hand on Ooh. Wow, smooth like butter. Like butter? What about this this Sparco R100 racing seat? What are your feelings? That's what it's called. It's called. That's what it's called. Um, I think it's really nice. You know, you could take a nice nap in it. It's very comfortable. We're not trying to take um, naps. It, what about the side things? Like if you turn, yeah, you're not gonna go like out the window That's or important. into your passenger, which I think is important. It's quite important. What about moving this, having this same seat in the passenger location? Um. I would like that. You would? Yeah, it's comfortable. Okay. <laughs> cool. Thank you for your honest reaction. Of course. Honey, would you like to come and sit in the seat? Thank you. So you can see that the Sparkle R100 seat has gotten a good review from my daughter. So thumbs up. We're moving in the right direction. My wife didn't want to be on camera. One day, one day she'll make a video. But she did sit in the seat eventually and did say, ooh, I like it. It's comfortable. She is small, so she didn't necessarily notice the bolstering. I told her, in comparison to the factory seat, night and day. I'm gonna ask her, what do you think about a long trip? Could you handle it for a long trip? She said, I might just need a pillow because it's a little hard. Good news, guys. That's good news. That means we're moving in the right direction to replacing the passenger seat with one of these Sparkos as well, and that would be totally awesome obviously i'm driving around in it a little bit this morning myself this is the first time i've actually had the car out of the neighborhood with the seat installed so um, i wanted to give kind of my quick overview opinions but uh, let's take a look at some car clips and maybe i'll talk over the clips and maybe i'll show a little bit more here because i'm certain to pick up some pros and cons of the seat myself and we'll go over them briefly
don't think it's going to work having the GoPro mounted on the passenger seat. Uh, it's just far too wobbly and wiggly. I hope the vibration, the noise of the vibration isn't transferring into the video. But um, I think if there's a passenger in the seat, it'll be fine. It'll hold it steady. But uh, I know these Q50s have a tendency to have a wiggly passenger seat uh, if there's no weight in it. So I think we're going to have to move the GoPro mount, at least this one, uh, into the back seat. It's no big deal. the speed around these curves the seat feels great obviously a lot of the weight reduction comes from eliminating as far as the factory seat to the Sparco seat is from eliminating a lot of those electrical components so like I said before unfortunately you you lose all of the electronic functionality of the seat uh, you, installing these sliders which are optional I can have the back and forth movement um, and I'll obviously this seat this R100 seat um, the, the back adjusts um, so you can choose your angle your angle of comfort um, but another large portion of the weight reduction comes in the foam so what you can feel is the you know stiffness of the padding in the seat if you will um, but it actually isn't all that bad. I've just been driving for maybe an hour, maybe slightly less, and it's still quite comfortable, but what I do notice is the lack of lumbar support, and this is gonna vary from person to person and your preferences. You know, if you have uh, back issues, this might become a little bit of a problem due to fatigue, um, but Sparco does make some lumbar support style pillows that you can that you know fit right in this. They do have Velcro on the back. Obviously, it's not gonna work with the vinyl seat, and I've heard some complaints about uh, it not really sticking to the fabric seats either, um, but I don't know that I would necessarily need to stick it you know, to the back of the seat, um, but just setting it in place while I'm driving long distances or while my wife is riding in the passenger seat, for example, um, I think that would be sufficient. Not necessarily even a Sparco lumbar support pillow, just put any pillow back there, but you know, the, the upper back feels great. Uh, the seat padding really isn't so bad. But like I said, it's definitely stiffer than the factory seat, but that's to be expected. No idea where this road goes. Don't drive fast on roads you don't know. It's a closed road, and you know what a closed road means for me? Opportunity for a launch. It's only 39 degrees, so I don't anticipate getting any grip, especially turning the traction control off. I wish you could rev a little higher.
looks like there's one. Well, I'll be damned. We got both of them going. Nice little patch, too. Anything else, not so bad. Okay, getting in, not so bad either. One thing that has become apparent to me uh, in regard to this seat, specifically for longer trips, is that I'm not gonna be able to have my wallet in my back pocket. It's just the the supports here on the sides, the, the bolstering on the seat portion itself really hold in tight, which is what you want. And, you know, I gotta sacrifice having my wallet in my back pocket, but that means it's gonna have to go somewhere else. It just, it just, you know, pushes. It just feels like it's, you know, you got, something bugging you in that area so no big deal but just part of it another thing i don't want to necessarily say a complaint that i have uh, but the adjuster lever is really far in it's it seems deep so you kind of have to really reach back to hit that lever you know to adjust your seat back forward or back um, another very minor complaint this might sound weird but actually the car feels faster with this seat installed and I'm not joking let me explain I don't necessarily mean in a straight line but as I take corners and accelerate out of turns uh, because the seat holds me more in place uh, you feel the g-forces if you will a little bit more it's almost like riding a roller coaster that has you strapped in and when you you're getting pulled down the hill or you're getting pulled around the corners it feels like you're moving a lot faster in the factory seats where you're just kind of sliding around your body kind of supports yourself and makes up for that for that uh, lack of support um, but what I'm trying to say is that when you take corners fast in these factory seats the non-sport seats anyway your body slides around so it's it's almost like it's kind of absorbing some of that that centrifugal force or that momentum that's pulling you toward the outside of the seat as you take a take a curve um, but with these it holds you in so you're just kind of planted um, taking that curve feeling all of the force which makes the car feel a little bit faster I would love to say it's way faster something happened overnight where the car got an extra 30 40 50 horsepower but it didn't it's just the Sparco seats I've had some people of course ask why I went with Sparco rather than some of the other large name brands like Recaro or Corbo or I guess uh, Brahm is getting to be more popular um, simple simple fact um, i've always been a big fan of recaro but um, i've always liked sparco as well and just looking through some of the options um, this seat this seat the r100 seat in particular fit kind of everything that i was looking for i obviously wanted something that had some adjustability i'm not at the point where i want a fixed uh, you know true 100 percent racing seat like i said in the installation video i wanted something that was kind of a classic style something that wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb, com sore thumb compared to the factory seats you know something that would kind of just blend although it has a relatively aggressive look it just looks decent in the car still I also couldn't have anything crazy aggressive um, not nothing super tall nothing super wide it has to fit obviously in the seat location without rubbing you know here on the pillar um, you know without encroaching too far on this side and you know obviously don't want anything wild going on so uh, this was closer to a regular and I guess this is why they call it sort of the street or the tuner seat it's not a pure racing seat like I said uh, it just is meant to be a good daily seat but actually will provide you uh, the support that you need when you start driving a little more spiritedly on the weekends you hit the mountains or you go to the autocross track or you you know you go to the drag strip every once in a while you want something that holds you in and supports you uh, but then when you're driving to work every day it's not something that's going to be uncomfortable or look funky and of course price has something to do with it as well sparko has a wide range of seats that vary in prices you can find some on amazon for 220 250 bucks uh, might be an option for you this one is that 300 330 range plus you got to remember the the base and the sliders they all are sold separately um, so this was something this was a seat the Sparco R100 was a seat that I could get uh, that had everything I wanted uh, in terms of adjustability the ability to throw on some sliders and also 
fit in the car how I want it to fit, look how I wanted it to look, still have that cool classic Sparco look, um, and it only be in the $300 range. So, you know, kind of checked all the boxes for me. And again, it was a name that I've been familiar with for many, many years and, uh, you know, a brand that I've always been a fan of. So. light hell yeah I'm really excited about this seat I'm I'm pretty pumped to get it into the mountains and get it onto the racetrack and and really see the difference that it makes but I can tell uh, it's gonna be great for a daily seat really comfortable uh, it gets that added support for the weekend runs in the mountains and um, you know I'm happy overall it's a, definitely a good investment if you guys have any questions about the seat in particular or questions about other seats or the installation process of the seat let me know in the comment section below i appreciate you guys watching very very much a lot of cool stuff coming up this spring and a couple of uh i think kind of fun videos coming up here in the near near future near future as well so stay tuned thanks again for watching thanks for subscribing see you guys in the next one